Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Olympic swimming team press conference. Um, we're opening this morning with our two uh, head coaches. So to the end of the table on my far left, uh, we have our men's head coach, Dave Durden. Uh, and next to me, my immediate left, we have our women's head coach, Greg Meehan. Um, what I would kindly ask, please, is if you do have a question, raise your hand. Um, we will filter through those and we will get through as many as we can prior to the next press conference. Um, and we will be asked to unmute yourself, so kindly just accept. And we will begin with the first question. Hello. Hi. Yes. Hey, this is Julie Chag from the Salt Lake Tribune. Um, thanks for being here. Uh, Greg, this is a question directed at you. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about Ryan White and what makes her a strong backstroker and also um, kind of what you think her chances are for meddling in Tokyo. Yeah, thank you. Um, Ryan has been an uh, awesome addition to this trip. I, I really didn't have the opportunity to, to get to know her or work with her previously uh, before this. And um, I've, I've seen from afar her success at the NCAA championships and, and then through the meets this spring, certainly knew that uh, she was a player come trials and um, obviously had, had a great performance there and um, has been a wonderful addition uh, to this particular group. Um, and, and in particular, she's, she's in the group that I'm currently coaching. So I, I get to work with her on a daily basis and feel pretty spoiled about that. Uh, she does a lot of things really well in her, in her stroke and in her race strategy. And I think that's uh, what's set her up to be successful. Um, and, and I'm excited about uh, her, you know, as we kind of get to Tokyo next week uh, in, in the lead up to the beginning of the games, uh, I'm excited to see her on that stage. She's, she's just rock solid. Does it, doesn't have too high highs, doesn't have too low lows. And, and I think that uh, approach uh, really allows for great performance at the games. And so she's going to be busy uh, with her individual events and some relay events. And so uh, I think she's going to help us have a really great meet for Team USA. Thanks. Christine, go ahead. Hi, hey, everybody. Thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. I, I guess this is for Dave or for both of you, but um, uh, there's been a lot of talk about vaccinated athletes and unvaccinated athletes. And I'm curious if there are any unvaccinated athletes uh, on the U.S. swimming team, uh, particularly Michael Andrew had talked about not being vaccinated. And I'm curious if you know if he is vaccinated now or not. And if not, um, does he pose a risk in any way to the team uh, at the Olympics uh, or even now? Thank you. Yeah, I think I think all of our athletes, and I think in the, in the community that, that we're in right now, we're, we're being very conscious and being very safe with how we're handling our teams, how we're going from place to place, how we're operating uh, in our training camp environment, how we are effectively bubbling ourselves through uh, through our actions, attitudes, and behaviors. And that's probably the more important piece of this: is what our you know, regardless of vaccination or not, are not vaccinated is, is what our attitudes and actions are uh, out here in training camp and subsequently when we travel into Tokyo and subsequently when we travel into the village. And that's been the most important thing. That's been our focus as a team um, during this time. And, and uh, I, I can say the, the, the temptation is great to, uh, to, to be in a, in a beautiful environment here in Hawaii. Uh, and, and, and to venture out, uh, our group has been really good. It has been really diligent with, with how they've been handling themselves in this environment. So um, I've, I've appreciated that. And, and that's been more of our focus uh, about how we are uh, interacting with the outside community our, and really more specifically how we're, we're handling the, our controllables uh, inside of our bubble. And, and that's, been, that's been our point. Lane Higgins. Hey there. With the addition of the mixed medley relay this year, um, I was wondering if both of you coaches could walk us through kind of what your strategy is in picking which team members will be on it and how to balance, um, you know, which men and women swim which strokes. That's a really good question. Um, 
And it's a really complex question. Uh, there is, there's a lot of, of math that goes into, into some of those decisions, but there's also some environmental circumstances that we're looking at, um, who we're swimming next to, uh, where, we're, where we're swimming uh, in the heat, where we're swimming, uh, you know, knock on wood potentially uh, into, into finals. Uh, how our athletes are moving through the front half of the meet. Um, so there's, a, 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 and looking at the event orders uh, at that particular, at those particular sessions and making sure that we're prepping people um, or we're swimming people in the, in the right way that, that's not impacting their, uh, their individual swims, but also helping us as Team USA win a gold medal. Um, so that's probably the best non-answer I'm gonna give uh, with that in terms of looking at the strategy of this. Uh, but there's been a lot of conversation and uh, we're looking at, at a lot of data points uh, to help us make the best decision to, to, to help that relay uh, get on the podium and, and, and hopefully win gold for the U.S. And to follow up on that a little bit, do you have a date for when you're hoping to have a more or less finalized lineup? Uh, an hour before uh, the beginning of the session, we'll have a relay card turned in. That, that'll be um, the, the plan that's communicated externally. Uh, the one nice thing about the where the mixed medley falls, um, somewhat similar to the respective men's medley and women's medley, is it's on the tail end of the meet. And we'll have seen a, a lot of things at that point. We'll have seen uh, most of the hundreds of stroke um, and, and hundred freestyles. And so we'll have a good sense of, of where everybody is and, uh, and just utilize that along with all the things that Dave mentioned to put together uh, those four individuals in the morning, uh, sorry, those four individuals at night uh, prelims who are going to help Team USA make the final uh, a day and a half later. And then for those four who are going to be on it at finals to go compete for a gold medal. And we're, we're just going to kind of simplify it uh, from that regard. Pat Forty, go ahead. Uh, yeah, question for Greg, without asking you to give away the relay playbook, similarly to the last question, but uh, is you have a, some intriguing options there. Uh, how has Simone's progress been, and is she somebody that you can have at least in the, the mix, possibly, as a relay swimmer? Uh, Simone's doing well. She's, she's come out of uh, all of the trials and, and um, you know, is getting a little bit better day by day. Um, and right now she's, she's keeping her focus on her individual event. Um, that said, I, you know, as we, as, as head coaches and as a staff, as we look at every relay, we look at putting together, um, those four individuals that are going to help us compete for a medal and, and for a gold medal. Uh, and so, you know, that being said, I think it's not just about, um, uh, that four by one women's free relay on the first day. But I think as we, we look through the meet, there's uh, always going to be conversations uh, about how do we put together this group? What does that look like using as much data as we have? That's a little bit earlier in the meet, so we have a little less uh, at that point to go off of. But, um, you know, that being said, we're, we're going to uh, just continue to sort of go down the path of putting together the four best athletes uh, to give us the, the best performance possible. Peter, go ahead. Hi, Greg. This is uh, Peter Bow with The Athletic. Um, I know you obviously recruited Tori Huska at Stanford, and I was wondering what stood out about her when you first met her in the recruiting process, and then how do you feel about her situation and her training heading into, into the games? Yeah, I've had the, the pleasure of, of getting to know Tori over the last um, the better part of two years now. Um, and just watching her um, really progress through this time in her career. She uh, first caught my attention because she's a really good, you know, short course swimmer, very fast underwater, has a ton of speed. Um, and then over the last two years um, has just continued to make leaps and bounds uh, in the long course pool. And, and obviously that led to, to her winning on fly, setting the American record there at uh, Olympic trials. Um, and, and I've learned a lot about her over the last two years, and I've learned even more in the last uh, week and a half. Uh, she's also in our little training group, so I've gotten a bit more one-on-one -on -one time with her. Um, her. Her coach at home, Evan Stiles, has done a great job preparing her for uh, the trials and then the transition here to the camp. And uh, we've communicated quite a bit on, on her preparation from now 
been told to many of the games, and uh, she's just on a roll and, and uh, you know, super competitive, um, athletic, but also just very, very humble um, uh, person. So I, I have been really, um, it's just been a great experience to work with her here, and I am very excited about what's ahead. Peggy Shin, go ahead. Hi, uh, question for um, Dave uh, about Annie Laser. She had a very emotional uh, win in the 200 breaststroke at trials. And I was just wondering, you know, I, I know she's had a very tough spring after her father passed. Uh, just wondering how she's been doing at camp physically and mentally. Someone from New York for Greg. Greg, why don't you take that one? Um, Annie is, um, she was doing really well. I, you know, I, I, I got a little bit of, of sort of how April, May, and June went for her when we were talking with her coach, Ray Ruth, who, who's here on staff. Um, and watching her um, go through that Olympic trials experience and, and come up a little bit short in 100, only to turn around and back back to me and make the team in the 200 breast. And every day that she comes in here, she is focused, she is working hard, but she's also just really enjoying this experience. And she has elevated uh, Team USA uh, here, whether it's in the dining hall or over at the pool. Uh, just, just kind of everything about her is is amazing. So we're very blessed that she is, is here on this trip, making us better. Um, and, and what a great story for her um, to be able to uh, to tell um, once once things kind of get rolling and, and then eventually wrap up in Tokyo. Uh, we're really proud of her for working through that, and um, we're excited to see what what she's got. Rebecca Bryan, go ahead. Hi, um, thanks for doing this. This is for either or both coaches. I'm just wondering um, if you can talk about how you're uh, helping the swimmers cope with or whether you've seen the swimmers affected by the sort of constantly changing news about the virus status in Japan. Uh, yeah, I think our, our group has done a really good job of, of staying in this particular moment and not getting too far. Uh, not getting too far ahead, not getting too far down the road. We, we've been enjoying, uh, you know, the, the moments that we've had in, in day to day, session to session, um, and, and that's something that's been articulated by our former Olympians that we uh, we've had the opportunity to to have uh, in front of our athletes virtually. Um, so it, it's that's been good messaging from our former Olympians. We picked up on that and we kept that message going going forward. Uh, as a staff with our athletes, and I, and I think that that's um, a, you know something that we that we really haven't that we haven't uh, talked about with with our with our team. We, we've been talking about what our training session looks like uh, in the day, what it's going to look like tomorrow, what what uh, what we're heading to in terms of the weekend, and our group has been doing a very very good job of that. Karen Krause, go ahead can tell it's a business trip because neither of you have looks like Hawaiian tans, but um, thank you for doing this. This is a question for both of you. Um, I'm wondering having no fans as they um, said will be the case, how does that impact performance? Do you think it makes it harder for world record people to um, swim world records? Um, does it impact racing at all? Yeah, I, uh, I can jump in that. Uh, Karen, we, we, I feel like we have raced in that environment for the past year um, with some, some minor exceptions um, or major exceptions at, at, our, at our trials. But it's, but it's something that, um, that our athletes have been comfortable with, whether it's been in situation championships, whether it's been a conference championships, whether it's been pro series meets. Um, I do like the fact, judging by the noise in our meal rooms, uh, at, at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, we're going to make that venue loud. <laughs> if, if, if it's just if it's just us in there, and uh, and you know, just in watching the uh, just the, the the relationships, the sort of the, the guard come down amongst the athletes with each other over these past two weeks, there is there is that bond that 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 you look for as a coach, and and that's happening, and I, and I feel like that is something that's really gonna be special for our athletes and helping them uh, go from race to race and day to day 
uh, th that's, you know, fans or no fans, that, that's something that, that, you, that I, I would want to have happen as a coach and it's happened. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how our athletes perform because of that, uh, those relationships, those bonds that they're creating and, and will continue to create over these next 10 days. Michelle, go ahead. Hi there. This question is for Greg. Um, I was just wondering, what do you think it says when you see Natalie Hines qualifying for her first Olympics at 27? What do you think that says about her and about swimmers and the longevity of the sport? And what does she bring to the team? Yeah, uh, we're really fortunate that, that Natalie made this trip. Um, I've gotten to know Natalie over the, the last few years, and she is an awesome young person. Uh, fiercely competitive, and to see her in that moment at trials, make her first uh, Olympic team, uh, was, was really special. Um, and she has a way about her um, that just like makes people feel comfortable around her. So whether that's you know in the in the meal room or over at the pool, you can just see she has this energy, uh, and it makes everybody around her comfortable uh, and better. And so when you when you take that in sort of that personal setting and you bring it over to the pool or you add the to the competitive piece once we're outside of training and actually into competition, um, we are we're really blessed that she's here with us. Um, and I think just the, the larger message that it sends, um, you know, we have, we have a lot of uh, first timers and they're not all the teenagers. I know it, that's been a big story. It's, it's our youngsters that have that have made this team, but but we do have some, some veterans that are here for the first time uh, that maybe never made a world championships even, uh, let alone Olympics. Um, and just the, the great messaging to those, the young kid or to those who are still in the NCAA system, if you feel like you're continuing to progress, uh, to just keep on it, keep working hard, uh, keep believing uh, and trusting, and things usually uh, will, will kind of work themselves out. So uh, now is a great example of that. Rick, go ahead. Rick. Okay, Rick, we will come back to you. Hey, I'm here now if you if you can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay, sorry about that. Um, for, for both you guys, in, in normal times, you'd have a pre-Olympic camp abroad. I'm just wondering how the COVID-related complications and logistics are impacting preparations. Um, are you confident everyone will be kind of acclimated and have enough time on the ground before the meet begins? Yeah, you know, it's been, it's been a slightly different uh, plan than we had initially four plans ago, right? Uh, you know, so we, we embarked on this process in, in late 2018. Um, but every step along the way, I feel as though um, the, the USA Swimming staff and, and Dave and I have put together a plan that makes sense given whatever restrictions are in place. Um, and this particular uh, camp has been really amazing, actually. Uh, there's, there's a challenge that we're not all in the same facility at the same time, and that we're, we're using three different facilities and very grateful uh, for the opportunity to use those facilities. Uh, but, but we are getting done what we need to get done from a training perspective. We're getting done what we need to get done from a, a, a team building and team bonding perspective, as, as Dave already touched on that. Uh, you can just kind of feel that energy continuing to grow. So, um, you know, that, that part here uh, has, been, has been perfect. And, you know, there's a reason that we're, we're heading uh, to get into the country of Japan on Monday, uh, and that's to, to get there early, to go through an adjustment period, uh, to, to have some time uh, at the high performance center before we transition into the village. And we feel really good about that plan. Uh, that's going to get everybody together uh, on the same page and in the same facility uh, for the rest of the way um, once we depart Hawaii. And uh, that, has can, that has prepared us and will continue to prepare us to be successful at the games. It's always nice to be, uh, to be in an environment in you know, Punahou High School, Yolanda High School, University of Hawaii, Close to us, and it's and it's and it's just it, it's great to feel that uh, being in the U.S. and just feeling that level of support. I know we talk about going over to an international camp and preparing our athletes, but we're getting that that sort of Team USA love all the way up until when we leave Tokyo, 
and that that's something that that we can that we can feel uh, wherever we go. We can step off the bus of the Alani High School, step off the bus of the University of Hawaii, step off the bus of Pruno. You, you, you just feel that, and that's been a that's been a that's been a cool thing to have before we head over. Julian, go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, Greg. Um, a quick a question from Australia, if you don't mind. Um, look, there's a long historic uh, rivalry between the US and Australian swim teams, uh, which admittedly has been pretty one-sided last couple of Olympics. But the Aussie girls in particular posted pretty fast times at the trials. Um, do you see them as a real threat to the US this time? Or do you still think you've got them covered? And, and just as an extension of that, Lily King made some comments pre-trials that the US women would win every gold medal in the individual events, uh, which didn't go unnoticed in Australia. Do, do you agree with Lily's prediction or is there sort of a, a coach's fear in the back of your mind that those sort of comments, all, all they do is motivate the opposition? Uh, you know, I, I think for, for us, um, we, we can't get too distracted on, on what the rest of the world is doing. Um, we're really staying focused on ourselves, on Team USA coming out of trials uh, with, with a little bit of time at home and then here uh, in Hawaii for this camp. It's about uh, the things that we need to do to be successful uh, in Tokyo and not getting too distracted about uh, our competitors. They'll, they'll be there when we, when we get there, uh, but we're going to keep our focus where it needs to be. Um, and, and what I love about what Lily said is, is that is that is who she is. That is her personality. She is competitive. She is someone that we want on Team USA she was great on relays, and, and regardless of, of um, you know the context of that, the, the reality is is that that competitive spirit is what Team USA is all about. And um, in, in as we uh, get into international competition, um, that, that that competitive spirit is is what drives us. Uh, and it doesn't matter um, whether it's Australia or Team GB or China or Japan or whoever it may be. Uh, it's about being the best that we can be as Team USA. Kyle, go ahead. Experience of training here in the islands um, these last couple of weeks and the unique opportunity um, you guys have had to train here. And then on top of that, you guys had the open practice at Punahou last time with fans. How special was that? It, it's it is it has been uh, it has been an amazing experience, one that that really exceeded our expectations. Greg talked a little bit about spreading out our group. We're normally we're at the same location, same pool, and we'll feed off of that energy. So we've really had to be reliant upon some smaller groups, but also the staff at uh, at these locations just to just to, to to help that environment, to help that training environment. And, with these, you know, in these facilities are, are fantastic, whether it's the Wayland of Punahou or, or the Pool of Yolani or, or just the setup of the University of Hawaii. It, it has had everything that we have needed to train at an elite level, um, more so probably than any other venue that we've gone to in the past four or five years in terms of training. So we've, we've been able to, to, to hit that. We've been able to do a little bit. We've been able to do some some more things that are comfortable for us in our day-to-day -day training environment than we had ever before. And, and that's a testament to, to these facilities, to the staff, to, to, the, to the people that have been uh, working very diligently to make this, make this work and, and to help us get better. And, and that last part, we can't help but feel that. Like this is a group that is working to help us get better. And, and that that piece has been really cool to experience. Uh, it doesn't matter what pool we're at, Yolani Punahou or, or, uh, or University of Hawaii. And we felt that today at Punahou with the uh, with the with the students of Punahou, with the, with the kids of Punahou, you know, cheering on. And, you know, Michael Andrew was in the in the midst right out of the gate of a pretty tough set, and just uh, the, the 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 fans there just getting him going. You could feel it. It's fun. Uh, you know, and we, 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 we did talk about, hey, this may be the last time that we have some fans in the stands watching us perform. And, and it, was, uh, it was cool to experience that. And we got a little, little more of our juices flowing. So, so thank you to the folks at Punahou for, uh, 
uh, for co-organizing that. It was, a, it was a great setup. And thank you to the folks at Elon and University of Hawaii for all the things that they've been doing to help us get better during this time. I'd say that just one quick add on to that is the, the Aloha spirit is a real thing. Uh, and that's been, been so evident and we can feel that as, as staff members and we know that the athletes feel that. So thank you. David Woods, go ahead. Yes, uh, for, for Coach Durden, uh, I was wondering what what he hopes to see from uh, Aaron Smith and Jake Mitchell in the 400 free. I, I think that's the only men that been on the men's side that had no medals in 16, 17, or 19. Uh, yeah, but Jake and, and Kieran, uh, you know, not to get too far ahead to, to the 400 free, we, we know where that is on the schedule. It's the first day out of the gate that night. What I, what I can tell you and what they're doing now uh, in the work that they're putting in right now, it's, it's spectacular. And so their their process that they've been going through uh, over these these last 10 days and, and, and looking kind of our, our next 10 days before we get into the village um, has, has been consistent. It has been uh, phenomenal. They have, they have a great uh, training group around them and, and they make that training group, uh, make that training group better. And, and so that's been really fun to see that, uh, you know, I can say from where they were 10 days ago to where they are right now, you know, Coach Nesty has, has taken that group and has done just a fantastic job with them over the past 10 days. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they're doing over the next 10 days. We, we know where the Florida Free is uh, on the first day of the meet. And, and, and when we get there, those, those guys will be prepared to race. But they've been staying on their process during this time. And that's what's been really encouraging to see. Henry, go ahead. Yeah, hey, guys. Henry Bushnell from Yahoo Sports. Um, Greg, you mentioned earlier how many teenagers are on this team and just how young it is on the women's side. Um, does that change how you approach camp at all? And then also, like, does it bring any sort of unique energy to this group? Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, the, the, the youth movement on the women's side is um, – uh, it's been pretty awesome. They they definitely bring a different level of energy uh, into training environment, into the meal room, uh, into some of the games that they're playing. Um, and but I like make no mistake, they are fiercely competitive. Uh, and there's a reason that they're they're on this U.S. Olympic team. Um, the, the Olympic trials is a gauntlet that uh, athletes have to work through to get here to be part of the U.S. Olympic team, and and they've all earned their spots. Uh, and they are set up to, uh, to to be successful at their first Olympic Games because they're continuing to do the things uh, now that they did to help them get here, to help them be successful. Uh, and so they, they've been um, a, just a joy to work with. Uh, they, they've kind of helped re-energize uh, myself as well, just as a, as a staff, that that little bit of bump from, from the youth. Uh, but I also know that we're going to rely on, on their competitive spirit once they do speak. Last question, Alice Park. Hi, thank you. This is for both of you. Just wanted to ask, you know, given the time now that you're uh, spending there in Hawaii and once you get to Tokyo and to the village as well, all the COVID related restrictions and the differences that um, uh, are going to be in place, everything from rooming to, you know, how they, how you eat, where you can go or can't go. Can you just talk a little bit about um, whether you have any concerns about, uh, keeping the entire team sort of non-COVID fatigued and um, in any ways that you have for um, uh, keeping them motivated to follow all the procedures and policies and um, ensuring that, you know, they stick to them. Yeah, you know, I think the, the first part of that question is uh, that they've had challenges every step along the way for the last 15, 16, 17 months. Uh, I think everyone faced unique challenges in their home training environment, in their local communities, uh, with with pool shutdowns and, and just limited interaction socially. They've had to adjust how they've done meals. All of those are um, uh, all of those are, are challenges that they have currently faced, and um, to, to kind of work through that year to make the Olympic team uh, to be here now they can handle the, the little challenges that are going to be in front of us. I don't think that, um, that they're unprepared for that. Um, and, and 
you know, the, 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 the second part of that is really, they're here to, to swim fast, right? We're, we're here to, to race at the Olympic Games. I don't think they're going to need a whole lot of motivation uh, to, to kind of work through uh, in that regard. Yeah, and, and you know, Greg and I are in an area of the country with the, with the six Bay Area counties, the city of Berkeley, where, where the restrictions, uh, where COVID restrictions happened early and, and were, were pretty consistent and, and uh, you know, as we were going through the year, we were in a conference in Pac-12 that was a little more restrictive up front. And so to, to, to actually um, to come here and to train together as a group, man, it's been awesome. I mean, it's like this has been this has been better than than the, the environment that, uh, that that we came from. And so uh, I, I do think that that our athletes, uh, you know, across across the board have had different challenges and restrictions all the way through. And, uh, and, and once we get to a location and we sort of you know get boots on the ground and we kind of you know settle in it's like okay we we, we know what we're looking at and, and then we're off and running uh so I, I would expect nothing less as we get to uh get to camp and and we understand the the, the guidelines the restrictions we understand it now and, and it's, it's it's a completely different experience as we get get sort of feet on the ground and, and get moving and get into our uh get into our mode of, of preparation and performance uh you know this is a group that has risen to the occasion each time so um, I feel confident in our adaptability. I feel confident in our being able to, to overcome the, the, the challenges that have been thrown our way through this. And I certainly feel confident as we as we head into Tokyo and, and being respectful of the, of, the, of, the, of the COVID situation and the COVID guidelines and restrictions, and then still being able to perform at, at our uh, absolute best. We're, we're, we're ready.